What is a number? The question is so simple to state, so easy to understand, yet so hard to answer. Indeed, philosophers of mathematics still debate as to what a number is, whether they exist, and where they come from. These are issues which we will return to in another video. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, mathematicians and philosophers began trying to formalize what it meant to do mathematics, and through this process they came up with the notion of a set, which seemed to work well with our intuitive notions about language and how we, as humans, ultimately view our surroundings. Naive set theory is a theory of sets, and in turn a theory of mathematics, which is described informally using natural language. Its primary fathers were Georg Cantor and Gottlob Frege, German mathematician philosophers. In constructing his sets, Georg Cantor wrote, A set is a gathering together into a whole of definite, distinct objects of our perception or of our thought, which are called elements of the set. So let us use this definition to discover and discuss what the nature of sets are. Suppose I have a herd of cattle. Some are white, some are black, and some are black and white spotted. I can hence separate them into three piles. A white pile, a black pile, and a white and black pile. But I can also separate them into two piles, either white or black. In the first case, all three piles are distinct, and in set theory we say disjoint. While in the second case, the two piles are not disjoint, since the black and white spotted cows fit into both categories. From here we may notice that we actually have five possible color properties to define. Being either white or black, being white, being black, being both, or being neither. Each property hence describes a set of the cows. All the cows, the white cows, the black cows, the spotted cows, and none of the cows. To describe none of the cows as a set might seem unintuitive, but this set called the empty set, or the null set, actually has some nice properties which are used in the theory of sets, so we'll allow ourselves to utilize it. What we may then notice is that we've defined a set of objects based on a common property that those objects have. This notion was formalized by Frege with the axiom of comprehension, given as the following statement, where phi, the Greek letter, is any property. This axiom intuitively states, for any given property phi, there exists a set which contains exactly those objects which have that property. So let's brainstorm some sets that we can construct utilizing this. The set of all numbers? Sure, it's all objects with the property of describing quantity. The set of all reptiles? Yeah, it's all objects with the property of being cold-blooded, scaly, air-breathing vertebrates. I'm sure a biologist would have a better definition than that, but say la vie. The set of all hairs on your head, or coffee beans, or water bottles. Essentially, if you can name a property according to this axiom, there's some set which has exactly the objects with that property. Now let's say that an object has two properties, like our white and black spotted cows. What sets do they live in? As we saw previously, they are in both the white cow set and the black cow set, but also in the set of being both white and black. We call this set, the set of having two properties simultaneously, the intersection of two sets and write c sub b and w is equal to c sub b cap c sub w. And what about the set of all cows? Well, they were either black or white. We call that set of objects, having either of the two properties, the union of two sets. And we write c of b or w is equal to c sub b cup c sub w. And finally, what if we wanted to talk about all the cows which didn't have a certain property? For example, all the cows which are not black. We call this set the complement of a given set and write neg c sub b or c to the c sub b or overline c sub b. From observation, we can see that this set is identical to the set of all cows which are white but not black and white. So we can formulate the following identity neg c sub b is equal to c sub w cap neg c sub b and w. These operations serve as the foundations for constructing mathematics from sets. One way to construct the natural or whole numbers from the theory of sets was given by the Hungarian-American mathematician John von Neumann, who defined 0 
as the empty set, 1 as the set which contains the empty set, 2 as the set which contains both the empty set and the set that contains the empty set, and 3 and 4, and so on. Replacing the sets with their defined numbers, we can see that we have 0 as the empty set, 1 as the set that contains 0, 2 as the set that contains 0 and 1, 3 as the set that contains 0, 1, and 2, and so on. The reason this construction works so well is that each set has the intuitive quantity or cardinality of objects that we normally associate with each number. Notice that 1 contains one object, 2 contains two objects, and so on. Further, there is a natural ordering on these numbers. That is, we can say that 1 is less than 2 because the object 1 is in the set 2. Another way of writing this is 1 is in 2 implies that 1 is less than 2. And this ordering is then naturally extended to all natural or whole numbers. This provides a foundation of arithmetic, the most basic form of mathematics. Now central to the practice of mathematics is the notion of a mathematical function, often defined as a function f from a set d to a set r is a rule that assigns a unique value f of x defined as y in r to each x in d. In other words, using our formulation of sets, a function is a rule which sends every object x with property d to a single object f of x with property r. It is then easy to see how functions do not need to take numbers to numbers, but could be defined easily on any objects which we can accurately describe by properties. Perhaps even more importantly, however, is the observation that we may actually define a function as a special kind of set. Say that to every object x with the property d, we append a 1 next to it, and append a 2 to every object y with the property r, writing x and 1 in a set, and y and 2 in a set. Now for each x in d, we may pick a single specific y in r to associate with it, and write parentheses x, comma, f of x is defined as the set which contains x and 1 and y and 2. This is the notion of a Cartesian product, named after the French philosopher René Descartes, who uttered the famous words, I think, therefore, I am. We may then define the function f in the theory of sets as the following. f is the set of all ordered pairs x, f of x, as defined above, such that x is an object with property d. In this sense, we can think of a function as a very specific kind of set. Continuing to generalize the notion of sets has allowed mathematicians to formalize a wide range of mathematical ideas, but there's a problem with what we've formulated today. Let us return briefly to the axiom of comprehension, from which we built our entire theory of mathematics. Recall that it stated that for any property phi there is some set x which contains exactly those objects which have that property. This notion, it turns out, is too vague, too general. You may be familiar with the liar's paradox, where a person states, this statement is false. A statement such as this raises the question of whether the statement actually is true or false. Well, if it's true, then it's false, and if it's false, then it's true. In other words, the statement is not well-founded. A similar paradox called the barber's paradox concerns a lone barber in a town who shaves anyone who doesn't shave themselves. The question is whether or not the barber shaves themselves. If they do shave themselves, they cannot possibly shave themselves, and if they don't shave themselves, then they have to shave themselves. Again, the barber's property is not well founded. Bertrand Russell, a British mathematician and philosopher, raised this argument to Frege's naive set theory. Consider the property phi of x defined as x not being in x. That is, the property of a set not containing itself. The axiom of comprehension states that there has to exist some set such that x is equal to all objects which don't contain themselves. From here, we may raise the question, is x itself in itself? If x contains itself, then it cannot contain itself by its defining property. And if it doesn't contain itself, then it has to contain itself by its defining property. Thus, this set is not well-founded. But it was well-founded based on the axiom of comprehension. 
This leads us to the conclusion that the axiom of comprehension itself is not well-founded. Our set theory, and therefore our foundations of mathematics, was wrong.